Yes, it's been a whole year since Apple introduced their first Apple Silicon machines containing their very own revolutionary M1 chip. Now, I can't afford to buy computers just in order to review them. I choose a machine based on how it's actually going to improve my day-to-day -day workflow as a YouTuber and voiceover artist, and I probably want to keep that computer for the next four or five years. I had been using a mid-range 16-inch MacBook Pro plugged into a monitor for about nine months leading up to the release of the M1 Max. I bought it for its power and, just in case I did want to do any traveling, its portability. Gradually though, I became more and more unhappy with its jet engine fan noise during video exports and its overheating issues. So when the M1 Max arrived, I was ready to jump ship. I took a good hard look at the M1 lineup before deciding which machine to go for. Should I pick a 13-inch MacBook Pro? the MacBook Air or the Mac Mini. I decided to go for the Mac Mini as realistically during a pandemic, with no clear end in sight, I wasn't really going to be doing much traveling. I also had all the extra gear I needed, such as monitors, connections and so on, necessary to go to a desktop machine, saving myself between three and 600 pounds compared to the MacBooks. I also wanted the convenience of all those lovely ports, even if Apple had made the awful mistake of removing the SD card reader. The less dongles in my life, the better. And as this was first generation technology, I decided to play safe by going for the base model until I could see for myself what all the fuss was about. If all went well with the M1 Mini, I could always sell my 16 inch MacBook Pro and upgrade to an even better spec later. Well, from the moment I started using the M1 Mac Mini, I felt as though I really had entered a new age of computing. With apps opening lightning fast, Final Cut working better and quicker than it ever had before, and with Rosetta emulation software for non-native apps working seamlessly from the start. And that was a real relief for me as I use Audacity for my voiceover work. And when it came to Final Cut Pro, I rarely saw any spinning beach balls as long as I continued to use proxy files, which was absolutely fine with me. Why thrash a base model machine with full fat video editing if you simply don't have to? Now, when it comes to storage, 256 gigabytes on the base model really isn't a lot, but it hasn't been an issue for me, as I've been editing from external hard drives for a long time now and know the drill. The only elephant in the room, well, more of a mouse actually, was that I did run into some of the well-reported Bluetooth issues with this machine, which I talk about in another video linked below. Now, in my own case, these were nowhere near as bad as reported by some other users, but still, I do feel their pain. Now, I know I don't have the most heavy workload when it comes to pushing this machine to its limits, but it's worked out just fine for me as a daily driver for the last year, editing voiceovers and working with two or three streams of 4K video for my YouTube videos has been a breeze compared to my 16 inch MacBook Pro. So after one year of M1 Bliss, would I still recommend this machine for most users? Well, actually, no, and here's why. Now, don't get me wrong, the M1 Mac Mini is absolutely outstanding value for money, especially the base model. And if you're thinking of entering the Apple universe for the first time, then I couldn't really recommend a better computer to start with. But the problem is, in the middle of this M-chip revolution, Apple seem to be releasing new models every couple of months at the moment, so it's difficult to know where to start. But if I were you and time and money aren't really your main issues, then I'd wait until the release of the brand new redesigned Mac Mini. The rumors are it's going to be a touch more powerful with the M1 Pro and the M1 Max chips, and there's going to be a sleek new slim redesign. And who knows, the SD card slot might even make a comeback. The rumors are the new Mac Mini will be released in the next few months, possibly before the spring. And if you really value all of that extra power in a brand new package, then I'd certainly recommend waiting till then. And I think the next Mac Mini is going to be an amazing budget alternative to the new iMac Pro, also rumored to be coming in the next couple of months. And now that I've witnessed the power of the M1 chip for myself over the last year, the last generation of Intel Macs look even more like rusty steam-driven buckets that I for one won't be having in my house anymore. So there you have it, one year with the first Silicon Mac Mini, a great machine with an even greater one to come, I hope. That's it for this video, see you in the next one.